All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Data Innovation Summit in Stockholm, and I have Ibrahim from Philips. Ibrahim, welcome to the Ravid Show. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Ravid. Uh, I know you've been uh, doing talks here at Data Innovation Summit. Uh, we'll definitely get into it. Uh, but just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us a little about your talk as well, and uh, what are you currently working on? Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me first, and I'm happy to see you and your audience. So, uh, Thank you. my name is Ibrahim. I'm the Director of Marketing Analytics at Philips for uh, health systems, that is basically the uh, health tech uh, products of Philips. Right. Uh, maybe a little known for the public, I think many people would be familiar with more of a personal health, uh, say uh, shaving yes. machines or uh, uh, air fryers or these type of products, but also the um, health tech part of Philips is quite uh, massive. Yes, that's awesome. And also in your talk, uh, you highlighted the importance of uh, considering more than just the raw data, emphasizing the role of gut feeling, anecdotes, and experience in the interpretation process. Yeah. Uh, could you expand on how you balance these qualitative as aspects with quantitative data? It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, especially in these type of conferences, many people would give data much more than what it really is when it comes to uh, confusing data with it with the truth like the ultimate truth yeah. and what i advocate for basically in this talk and also in many uh, um, in many uh, conferences is that we should interpret data as one input of the truth so the truth could include things that doesn't cover by data that could include things like experience uh, even things that are harder to measure like gut feeling so the best way to deal with that is first of all we acknowledge the limitations of data uh, when we say there is a lot of things that we always talk about uh, including data quality the way we measure data the way we uh, the data sources we are using so first of all i think we need to acknowledge um, that what we get is not the absolute picture of what's happening right. it's the best interpretation we could Good. So I think we start with ourselves for the data community with let's acknowledge the limitations of what we deal with. That's one thing. The other thing that I think is also very important is not to underestimate experience. So, and this is something I would personally do within you know, my day-to-day -day work. And I would bring you, you say, we work, for example, on some topic for marketing analytics. I would tell you, what do you think about this? Do you think this data makes sense to you? And I would love to hear anecdotes and also from your experience, do you think this makes sense or something is missing? And when we see a, a, like a conflict between what experience says and what data says, this is where we start getting interesting insights about what is really going on. Yeah. So I think it's important, first of all, to acknowledge the limitations of what we have. And the second thing is, let's acknowledge that gut feeling, experience, other things is as important as data in this context. Love these insights and uh, thanks for sharing those points. Uh, you also discussed about several instances where you know, data is true but misleading or in misinterpreted, such as COVID-19 vaccination data and the college uh, admission case. Uh, what strategies do you recommend for analysts and data scientists to minimize uh, the risk of these misinterpretations in their work? Yes. So I would always start with a big picture. It's very, very important that we understand the context. Right. You know, and like in marketing, we always say content is king. In data, I say context is king. So it's really important that you get what is the context of this data to put it in uh, in its proper uh, interpretation. Right. So first start is you understand the context. Second thing is you understand the big picture, which is if you work on marketing analytics as an example, you need also to connect what is happening in the market externally. So it's not only marketing performance for your company, it's also about what is happening in the entire economy. Maybe right. people are having less purchasing power. Maybe uh, there is some uh, competition that is playing a different game and uh, gaining more market. So there is a lot of aspects that you need to put in mind when interpreting the data beyond your own sphere. So first step would be put context. Second step, connect other data. Uh, data points from the external bigger picture and right. third point I would say is um, you need to be always curious about asking uh, and you know uh, interrogating <laughs> the data right. if I may say. Exactly. Yeah. No, that is something very really interesting and uh, very important for yeah. sure. Yeah. Also uh, you touched on the ethical dimensions of data use uh, particularly in public health uh, context in an era where data can be both a tool but also weapon. Yeah. Uh, how should organization foster a culture of ethical data use and what role should transparency play in this process? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I cannot emphasize much on how important that topic is, is yes. still, like especially nowadays, and I think it's very important uh, first for each organization to have a clear ethical framework on how to deal with data. And that includes like starting from the collection 
what is possible and you know we go far beyond regulations because you have regulations that you have to obey right. but beyond these regulations ethically as an organization what do you really stand for and what do you promise for your customers and for your um, you know clients so i think the first point is having a clear ethical guidelines and the, th and the second part uh, and I think this is uh, uh, overlooked much in many companies is to make sure that w people have ethical safety um, to act and you know uh, psychological safety to act on a data in a proper uh, ethical way because if you got stretched if you got uh, you know stressed to deliver and to deal with whatever you have you many people would feel uh, you know the urge to cross the line and right. I think we all need to have that space to be able to deal with that uh, properly. Okay, yeah. these, are, these are fantastic insights. Also quickly, uh, want to ask you uh, one question since obviously we are here at Data Innovation Summit. Obviously data plays a very important role. Everyone's talking about data, but there's a lot of talking around Genia as well. Yeah. Any thoughts around that? Any quick thoughts that you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I would say it always comes to impact. So we need, um, I think we really need to avoid another uh, hype where you know there will be a massive investments pushed into this domain without having a clear understanding of its implications. I think from us, from an analytical perspective, I think there is a good promise of great value, but we need to really uh, take that carefully, uh, you know, um, and, and start with the data quality. You, know, you cannot use really that if you don't, if you have a serious problems with data quality. And, right. and I think for many organizations, that's like the foundation that is not there. The other part is, can you come with a tangible, quantifiable uh, value? out of this otherwise it will still be a cool project to have it's something you know when you kind of get into something new you definitely want to also see the roi yeah and uh, you're so right about data quality i remember we did a you know meetup and there were like 10 speakers they had uh, the meetup was around generative ai but every slide had data quality mentioned in it yeah. and exactly what you mentioned when it comes back to data quality why not focus on that first yeah and yeah. then just not get run into the hype uh, very quickly but uh, see the results and then absolutely you know, kind of take that yeah and i think especially in our uh, domain i think we have many hypes to last uh, <laughs> 20 years uh, so it's better we avoid another one <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, 100%, yeah. Ibrahim. Uh, it is such a pleasure to chat with you on the Rabbit Show. I'm pretty Likewise. sure our audience would also love to reach out to you. Which is the best place? Is LinkedIn a best place to reach out to absolutely, you? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I would say, the yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn would be the best uh, starting point. I'm quite responsive there. So okay. I would be happy to uh, engage with your audience. Fantastic. Thanks a lot again, Ibrahim, for doing this. And I uh, hope you have a great time at uh, Data Innovation Summit the rest of the day. Uh, but Thank thanks you. once again. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone.